To witness a total solar eclipse is to experience fear, at least a little. Most people wouldn't admit that. We're 21st century humans, after all, and we know that an eclipse is a completely harmless thing. That doesn't mean, however, that the tens of millions of people who witnessed the great American eclipse on August 21st won't be a little spooked all the same. All of us operate on neurological software that was written when we were proto-humans living on the savannas. And to the more primitive part of our brains, there's something deeply unsettling about the sight of an eclipse. The sky darkens, which it does every day, but to a shade of blue and then black and blue that occurs at no other time. Throughout history, human affairs have been shaped by the suddenness and eeriness of a solar eclipse. The Lydians and the Medes ended their war in 585 BC when a total eclipse darkened the sky and convinced the combatants that it was a sign of disapproval over the ongoing fighting. The English saw an unhappy cause and effect between the eclipse of August 2, 1133 and the death of King Henry I, even though Henry died more than two years later. In the Odyssey, Homer recounted the eclipse of 1177 BC, writing, And the sun has perished out of heaven, and an evil mist hovers over all. Over time, of course, humans became less superstitious and more scientific, and an eclipse became not an occasion for fear, but an opportunity to learn. During the total eclipse of August 18, 1868, French astronomer Jules Janssen studied the prominences, the flames and flares that dance around the edges of the sun's blacked-out disk. Looking through a spectroscopic prism, he saw the signature of helium, thus discovering the second lightest element in the universe, even before it had been found on Earth. Much more significantly, on May 29, 1919, British astronomer Arthur Eddington used a total eclipse to prove one of the premises of Einstein's general theory of relativity, that gravity will bend light by a predictable amount. Months before the event, Eddington measured the precise position of the Hyades star cluster. Then, on May 29, when the sun was blacked out and the stars popped into view, he measured it again, and it was different by a factor perfectly consistent with the bending Einstein had predicted in his 1915 theory. The Times of London announced the discovery with the headline, Revolution in Science, New Theory of the Universe, Newtonian Ideas Overthrown. That, in some ways, illustrates one more gift of the solar eclipse, that it allows for two different kinds of vision the aesthetic and the insightful, the glimpse of beauty and the glimpse of the working of the cosmos itself.